Hey guys, I'm Jordan and you're watching Fixbook. After watching this video, your car problems stand about as much a chance as this laptop does against my hot lid. Now, make sure you stay tuned so you can see what happened to the laptop at the end of this video. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below. So today I'm going to be showing you how to change the front brake pads and rotors on your Chevrolet Cavalier. Alright guys, and the tools I use for today's video is a big flathead screwdriver, a long 3 8 ratchet, a little 3 8 ratchet, a 3 8 socket. It's a hex socket and the measurement is actually 3 8 It's not a metric size socket there. I also use a crossbar. You'll need a 19 millimeter and a breaker bar or a crossbar like this. I also used a set of a uh, measuring caliper tool there. I use this, this jack stand, some caliper grease, some brake grease, some anises, and a jack along with the jack stand. So with all that said, let's go ahead and start today's video. Okay guys, and the first thing we want to do is go ahead and break loose all your lug nuts here while the car is still on the ground. And it's going to be a 19 millimeter socket and a breaker bar or a crossbar like this that you're going to want to use on those lug nuts. Okay guys, and the next thing you want to do is go ahead and lift up the car. A good spot to lift up is you'll see right there, my jack is there, there's a plastic piece in front of the jack, but right behind it there's like a metal support bar. It's a good sturdy place to put it and you want to put it right there in the middle and that'll lift up both the wheels off the ground there. And then your jack stand, you're going to want to put it right over here on the side right in that place right there. And then once you've got your jack and jack stand in place, we'll go ahead and take this wheel off. All right guys, and now I've got the vehicle lifted up off the ground, so I'm just gonna finish taking these lug nuts off here. Now I'm just gonna remove the wheel and we'll see about compressing our piston here on a caliper and we'll go ahead and get these brake pads off. Okay guys, and the next thing we'll do is we'll take our big flathead screwdriver here and I'm just gonna compress slowly back here. And you can see the pistons moving this way. So we're doing that so we'll be able to remove this piston when we get the caliper bolts loose in here. So we're gonna next remove these caliper bolts and it's gonna be a 3 8 3 8 drive hex socket. <laughs> so we've got a 3 8 drive right there and then the actual hex socket is gonna be a 3 8 it's not going to be a metric socket so I was hoping or I was looking for the nine millimeter socket there and, and I was not able to find it there so um, I had to go and buy a 3 8 one which apparently is just like the equivalent of the nine millimeter supposedly so for whatever reason they don't sell a nine millimeter hex socket at least where I was looking so now I'm just gonna get my other tool here so see I got my, my new tool here There we go. Yeah, I got my new cordless ratchet here. It saves quite a bit of time. So there we go. And once we get both those guys off, I'll just go ahead and pull this guy right off here. And basically, we've got this rotor here. And wow, you don't even have to take a, a bracket off there. The bracket is actually built into this knuckle right here. So the, the caliper itself serves as a, a bracket so that's pretty cool so we're gonna go ahead and we'll pull these pads off that one's just kind of sprung in there and then this one we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and kind of pry it off help it help it off there unless it's easy so I'll just reach for my handy flathead here and there we go so that's how you take the brake pads off. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the rotor. All right, we have now reached the most important segment of this video. Please do not skip over this part of the video. It's important for you to hear what I've got to say about rotors. And it's important to assure that after you've done your brake repair, your car will be safe to drive. So, we've got a few different options here when it comes to dealing with your rotors. You can either replace your rotor have your rotor resurfaced or you can keep and use your current rotor as is. Now first I'm going to go over replacing the rotor. It is an absolute must to replace the rotor if its measurement is below the minimum thickness threshold to ensure your car is safe to drive. What I'm going to describe here in just a second 
whether you want or don't want to replace the rotor, that's up to you. Affordability and comfort is at hand. But if it is below the minimum thickness threshold, there's no other way about it. You must replace the rotor. Okay, so now that we understand that, and here in just a second, I'll show you how to measure it and be able to tell whether it's below the threshold or not. But now we're going to talk about turning your rotors. Now, there's a few, there's a couple reasons you could turn your rotor, and that's to keep your present ro rotor. And you can pay about $10 to Napa or O'Reilly where they have a brake lathe and they will turn your rotor for you. It's, it's a cheaper option than buying a whole new rotor. And the reason you'd want to do that is if you've wore your brake pads down metal to metal and the metal pad is wedged in grooves there and it's all torn up, then you don't want to put new pads on that torn up surface with your old rotor. So you'd want to have your rotor resurfaced. And that's to ensure longevity for your new brake pads. The other reason to have your rotors resurfaced at a parts store is if you're having vibration problems with your rotors. That is, if you're driving down the highway and you apply the brake pedal and you feel your brake pedal vibrating. If you don't like that, that would be a good reason to have your rotors turned. But if you're really particular, just keep in mind that when the rotors are thinner, they're more likely to develop that warpage problem. Because what happens is you'll be driving down the road, you'll run through a big puddle of water and the water will splash on the hot rotor and it'll warp the rotor. The thicker the rotor is, or the newer the rotor is, it's gonna be less likely to develop this problem. So resurfacing the rotor, if you have that problem, will fix the problem, but it'll come back faster. So if you have the extra money, and you really don't want that problem you can go ahead and just throw money at it and just get a new rotor every time but if you want to see the problem go away and risk it coming back or not it may or may not come back you can go ahead and turn it and get out of the situation cheaper and be more comfortable now the last option is to just keep your rotor and put new brake pads on that is a very acceptable option and that's what I do about 80% of the time. Again, as long as the rotor is above the minimum threshold. Because if it's not, it's not going to be safe to drive. So, it's okay to put new pads on your old rotor if it's smooth like this you can see right here. As long as it's a semi-smooth surface, you can go ahead and put the new brake pads on. It's really fine. So those are the three options that you have. Replacing, resurfacing, or just keeping your old one. And again, most of the time, most people are just fine keeping their old rotor and putting new pads on top of their old rotor. One more thing I almost forgot to is rotors that cause vibration, they're safe to drive. It's just an uncomfortable thing. The unsafe thing is the below the minimum thickness, but rotors that cause vibration are safe to drive. And also, this minimum thickness number, if I don't tell you exactly what the number is here in just a second, you can find it at your parts store. They'll, they'll give you a discard thickness number on your rotor, so keep that in mind too. All right guys, and the minimum thickness measurement for this rotor here is gonna be 18.85 or 18.65 millimeters. Just double check with your parts store. They should be able to let you know. And I'm gonna measure it here and it's gonna be 19.35 millimeters. So this one's gonna be safe to use. So I'm just gonna be replacing the brake pads and we'll make sure to lube up our caliper slide pins and we'll put everything back together here. Okay guys, so now I'm going to put everything back together and before that I'm just going to show you that's how you take your rotor off. It just slips off just like that right there. So you take your new rotor or resurfaced rotor and just set them back on there right like that. And then we're going to do some things here with your caliper before we put the stuff back on. We got these slide pins and we're going to want to make sure they're sliding well and this one doesn't seem to be doing so and this one seems to be moving just a little bit. So if you can, we're going to pull them out here. And we're gonna wipe them down and leave them up with new disc brake grease. So you'll just take like a red rag and we'll wipe them off there. And I'm gonna lube them up well so he slides back and forth well. Okay guys, so here we are. I got some disc brake quiet grease or lubrication. I'm just gonna take a little bit of stuff and apply some here on my slide pin. And we're gonna do this to both sides. So I'm just gonna take this guy and I'm gonna stick him back right in here and this will help him slide better. Oh, and there goes my glove. I'll be changing my glove here momentarily. And this one may require some work, so I actually have a video showing you how to remove difficult slide pins. You can search Fixbook 
caliper slide pin or fixed book pin you'll be able to find it that way and that'll show you how to remove difficult pins that are not coming out so you'll just want to do what you saw me do there make sure you can remove the slide pin and then just apply some grease so it'll slide back and forth you want to just kind of go like that right there now the next thing you'll want to do is if you didn't get your caliper piston compressed all the way back in with that flathead screwdriver method you can go ahead and take a C clamp and stick your old pad in here and hook it up there and just kind of twist it down so you can press it all the way flat. I'm actually going to be putting the old pads back on this one. That's what we decided to do. So I'll just go ahead and put them on. I'm not going to compress this one all the way back. But if you don't want to use the C clamp method, you can also stick a new pad in here and stick it back on your rotor and get it set up there and use the flathead screwdriver method once again and you should be able to compress the piston all the way back doing it like that. So now we'll go ahead and put those pads back on. Now to put our pads back on or your new pads back in, what we're going to do is we'll take the one like this with that clip back there, we're going to set them right like that and just snap them in there and with these things and you'll just kind of work them on there right like this until he just slips right in there. Then. I'll move the, the camera for you so you can see a little bit better. We're going to take our caliper, make sure you swing them around so your brake hose is going the right way. We'll hold it in like that and then we'll get it set up in such a way, there we go, where we can bolt our caliper slide pins back in. Alright guys, and the next thing we're going to do here is get our caliper bolt star back in. And you're going to want to make sure and go ahead and get them threaded in there good. And then we'll just run them all the way down. There we go, until he runs down. And I'll grab the bottom one here. I'm going to make sure he's lined up there good and well. And there we go. And then I'm just going to take a ratchet and make sure... I get them on there good and tight as I want them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get on here and oh, right there. Just give it a good hard push and maybe a quarter turn or so. And I got the top one. And now what you want to do is go ahead and get in your car and depress the brake pedals all the way so we'll even out this caliper pin. Uh, I'm sorry, this caliper with the brake pads and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. And then when we put our wheel back on, this rotor here is going to straighten up there so we can see it's back to about even. And then, so once you've depressed your brake pedal and pumped it up all the way hard, and we'll go ahead and put our wheels back on here and we'll make sure everything's tightened up and good to go. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and put my wheel back on. And the video is not over yet, guys. I have one more tip for you here. What I've began to do, and what I suggest you do, is get you, I'm making sure everything's in the screen here, get you a can of this anti-seize, and especially if you're using like a crossbar or breaker bar, so you can just apply right here, just to the tip of each stud because when you use a crossbar and a breaker bar, your chances of destroying a stud or lug nuts is a lot greater. So by spending about $8 on a can of this anti-seize, you can do it every time and it greatly prevents the chances of tearing up one of these studs here. So it's just good practice and it's something I've just recently started practicing and it could save you a lot of time and money, is especially if it prevents you from tearing up a stud. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start all these guys, and I'm going to use my new impact driver. Uh, I like it a whole lot here. I just got it. It's it puts on about 450 pounds, and it's a great little tool to add. So and I'm using a torque stick here. This is gonna make sure it puts about 85 foot pounds on there. So we're just gonna go in the star pattern. off there. And there we go. Go ahead and remove your jack stand and let the car down and your job is complete. That's it for today's video. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.
thanks for watching guys and don't forget to subscribe so you can catch all my new videos which publish Mondays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Eastern Time and I will see you then.